All right, so here comes the horizontal metrization theorem. So the statement is that every regular space with a countable basis is metrizable. Okay, so regular with a countable basis. And notice that we have that countable regular space with countable basis is normal. Okay, we have this. Okay, so to prove it, we can use the lemma. Okay, so the theorem is that the goal is to be x and metrizable space y. Okay, so here we're going to use the fact that r omega with product topology is metrizable. So step one, first we show something that there is a countable collection of a continuous function with the following property. For any x and for any u neighborhood of x naught, <coughs> there exists a natural number such that it is positive at x naught and other than the neighborhood u and maps to zero. Okay, so it's a collection of continuous function. So we first know that, as I said, regular and calculable basis gives normal. And given x and u, x minus u is closed. So by the horizontal lemma, right, there exists a continuous function such that f of x naught is 1 and f of x minus u is 0. So if we do this for all pair of x naught and u, we note that x need not to be countable, right? So we want to cut down the size of all f. So first, here we're just going to use um, the countable basis condition. So let bn be a countable basis. Then for each pair such that we have this, we apply the horizontal lemma. So a continuous GNM such that at G bar N, it gives one, at this, it gives zero. So we're separating uh, the G bar N and the set X minus BM by a function GNM. Okay, so the collection is the desired collection. Why? Because given any X on U, we can pick a basis that contains this. Now with regularity, we can choose bn such that it can use bn and we have this, right? So we use the regularity. Then the corresponding gnm, we have gnm of x naught is in gnm bn, which gives you one, right? Gives you one, because we have this, right? And gnm of x minus bm is zero. Right? So x minus u is a subset of x minus bn. So we have x minus u is zero. So it's the desired collection. Right? Because for n and uh, we have so this and this. So from here, we know the collection is indexed by a subset of z times z, which is countable. So we can re-index it to fn. So step two, we're going to prove the theorem. So first, we take fn and r omega and product topology, we define a function f like this. So our claim is that f is embedding. <coughs> so we show that f is continuous. From here, we just show the pre-image of a sub-basis that was open in x. So a sub-basis in r omega is something in the form of this, where b is in om <coughs> omega and u beta open in R. Now, the pre-image of f under this set is equal to this because f beta is u beta pi beta of f. And for each beta, f beta is continuous, right? So this is continuous, which means that this is open in X. So as desired. And we want to show that f is injective now, if x is not equal to y, since x is regular, right? x is regular, then it's Hausdorff. We can separate them by uv, open. Then there is this index n such that fn x is greater than 0, and fn y is equal to 0, right? Because fn of x minus u is 0, right? Like, just to show that, right? So fx is not equal to fy. Because this is positive, but this gives you zero. Now we show that f is a homeomorphism of x onto fx. So we let fx to z be a subspace of r omega. 
we know that f is already a bijection between x and z, right? Because we know that this injective and f to its image set is automatically surjective. So it is a bijection. So we show that f u is open in z when u is open in x. So if we show this, then we show that f is a homeomorphism of x onto fx. So we just let z not in the set f u. We want to open set w of z such that we have this relation. Then f u is open, right? Because for any uh, element in the open set, right, we can find a, another open set such that it contains here. And because this is open, we can find a basis, right? So we see that this suffices to show that f u is open. So now let x naught and x such that f of x naught is z naught. Okay, so we're picking z naught in the set f u. Okay, for u open in x. Well, from here, we have um, u is open in x, right? And z naught is in f of u which means that x is in u, right? So we choose n such that f n x greater than 0 and f n of x minus u is 0. Now we take v p this open in r omega, right? The set is open in r omega, it's a sub-basis, right? We let uh, w be v intersect z, okay? So this set intersect with f of x. Okay, then we show that, I mean, we know that W is open in Z, right? But by the definition of subspace topology. So we claim that Z0 is in W is a subset of F of U. Okay, so first we have this because pi and Z0 is equal to this is greater than zero. So pi and Z0 is greater than zero, which means that Z0 is in V. Right, and also has Z naught in G, Z by definition, so Z naught is in W. Now we show, we want to show this, right? To show this, since for any Z in W, Z is in net, Z, which means that Z is in FX for some X in X. And Z is also in V, which means that pi N of Z is positive. But pi N of Z is equal to what? F and X, right? <coughs> for some, for some N. No, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Is, is fixed N. Fixed N. Okay, I'm sorry. Is for this fixed N. And we know that F N of X minus U is, is equal to zero, right? From above. Right? We have this. Right? We have this, which means that we have f and x is positive. So x must be in u. Right? It must be in u. If you're not in u, you map to zero, which is a contradiction, so you must be in u. So z is in f of u. Okay? So this, this. So from above, f is an embedding of x in r omega. So now it remains to show that if you're embedding, then you're metrizable. Well, if x is homeomorphic to z, z is metrizable, we show that x is metrizable. We let x in the topology be given and z d prime be a metric space. We define a metric on x by d of a b is d prime of f a f b, okay? So we already, so this satisfied that D is a metric, trivially. So we just want to show that the topology of each other are equal, right? The topology are equal. So we let A be open in the original topology. Now, FA is open in this, right? So we let X be an A, Y be FX. Now we can pick a ball contained in FA. Right, fa is open. This we can uh, for any element y fx, right, x and a, then y is in fx. We can pick a ball centered at y that is contained in fa. Now, 
we have z is in this if only if this is true well by definition this is true and by definition this is true right so they're all equivalent so which means that this set and this relation we have that bd of x epsilon right is the pre-image uh, set of this ball and this ball is the subset of what bd f of a so we have this and this gives a which means that we have find a ball that is containing a so a is open in the metric topology now we let an open set in the metric topology right so we let we want to show that we have a uh, we have a open set open and original no right original that is contained in i mean it is open it's open in the original topology right so we just let u be this and x is in u y is fx we can pick a ball that is contained in u and we know that y is contained in like with the same radius same radius right with this metric so again we have this is it's just copy of this right so from here again we have this from this and from here we just swap we just swap them it gives this right and this is a subset of u right but this set it is open in the original topology because f is from x to z right this is what this is open in open in original topology right because we state that right the f is embedding of x and r omega Okay, so this pre-image of this open set and this is open with open in Z. So this thing is open in X with this original one. Right? And X is inside the set, right? Because well it's easy to verify, right? Because um because f of x is equal to y is contained in y epsilon right so x is in the set so which means that we have find an open set that is contained in u and we can use the fact that this set is open in this we can get again another basis right basis of this right so it shows that u is open and i mean the original topology right so x is matrizable right you have this and this which shows that x is matrizable okay. And in step two, we proved something stronger than this theorem. So 34.2, embedding theorem. So the statement is kind of long. I'll give you time to read it. If the space and one point says are closed, and we have continuous functions says find a requirement for this in the neighborhood, and x alpha such that positive x vanish outside this, then this function defined by this is the embedding of x and rj. This one is not hard. So the proof is that, as in step two, we replace r omega by r j, right? We replace r omega by r j and n by alpha. Now, if x is not equal to y, right, then x minus y is the neighborhood of x. One point set are closed, right? One point set are closed. <laughs> So there is this alpha such that 
this is not equal to this, which means this is true. And the rest follows, right? We just replace this by this, this by this. So, so we just show, oh, this is continuous? Yeah, because, right, our omega, this is j, alpha, and j. Injective, we like, we already verified this. A homeomorphism, right? Um, homeomorphism, choose n, choose alpha and j, such that f alpha, 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 blah, blah, blah. Right? Pi alpha, 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 r, and j, right? It just follows, right? It remains unchanged. So, this is an embedding theorem. For later use, we state it here. All right? That's it. Thank you. This is like a, or it helps you to, I mean, well, I, I put it here, but it's like not use, not useful. So, so this is the horizontal matrization theorem. Okay. Thank you.